Hello everyone and welcome to Metagame Mastery, where it's not just about what the card does, but how it impacts the game. Core 2019 preview season is upon us. We are entering day four and there are tons of amazing new cards, including Liliana, Apex of Power, Arcades the Strategist. The list goes on and on and I'm going to cover all of them with you today. If you enjoy our content, click that subscribe button so you get access to all our latest videos and if you look to support the channel, check out our Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Without further ado, big time! Go! Time! Let's go! Liliana, untouched by death, is 4 CFC, 2 colorless black black for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. Her plus 1 ability is to put the top 3 cards of your library into your graveyard. If at least one of them is a zombie card, each opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. Her minus two ability is target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of zombies you control. And her minus three ability is you may cast zombie cards from your graveyard this turn. So this one is just zombies, 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 all day long zombies, right? <laughs> She's pretty good um, uh, protecting herself based on your board state. She can act as removal she can also uh give you pseudo card advantage by populating your graveyard and then allowing you to cast cards out of your graveyard so this is an interesting planeswalker design because she has no real ultimate per se but at the same time it's it's a solid all-around card if you're going zombie tribal maybe with scarab god and edh this is a welcome addition to your deck Liliana's contract is 5 CMC, 3 colorless, black, black for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you draw 4 cards and lose 4 life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 4 or more demons with different names, you win the game. Wow! That's a cool new alternate kill condition. It's a great card advantage spell, and it will absolutely win games in Kalia of the Vast EDH decks. A Risen Gorgon is 3 CMC, 1 colorless black black for a 3 3 zombie Gorgon. It has death touch as long as you control a Liliana Planeswalker. So this is a Planeswalker deck card and honestly it's pretty decent. It's on curve, it has potential upside and with the number of Liliana Planeswalkers out there, more often than not you can have this be a death touch 3 3 for 3. That's solid value. A Johnny's Influence is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, white, white for a sorcery. Put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature. Look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may reveal a white card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So this is part of the new cycle of Planeswalker deck rares where you get to get some value off of the card and then it replaces itself assuming you're running a monocolor deck. Sarkon's Dragonfire is 5 CMC, 3 colorless red red for a sorcery. It deals 3 damage to any target. Look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may reveal a red card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, I particularly like the art on this one. It looks fantastic. Not a whole ton of value here for 5 mana investment, but it certainly looks cool. Scala Wolf is 5 CMC, 3 colorless green green for a 3 3 wolf spirit. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may reveal a green card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So I like this one a little bit more than the others because at least you get a permanent on the board. It affects the board state and uh, it replaces itself. It's pretty solid all around. Tezzeret's Gatebreaker is 4 CMC for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a blue or artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You can pay five colors in a blue. Tap it, sack it. Creatures you control can't be blocked this turn. So, this one, I like that it's a little bit more flexible. You can get an artifact card or a blue card. So, that's a wider range. You're less likely to whiff. Uh, probably need it, especially in a Tezzeret deck. The cost, though, you're paying 10 mana to make it so that creatures 
uh, you control key if you block this turn, that's pretty exorbitant. So uh, overall, it just doesn't do enough. Tezzeret Strider is three colorless mana for a 3 1 artifact golem. As long as you control a Tezzeret Planeswalker, Tezzeret Strider has menace. Yeah, this one's just not good. Arcades the Strategist is four CMC, one colorless and bant. That's green, white, blue for a 3 5 legendary Elder Dragon with flying and vigilance. Whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Wow, this guy's so good. <laughs> like, this is this is such a build-around commander. Uh, naturally, they've got a ton of Defenders in this set, so you can do some cool stuff and uh, limited with this. But where this guy will really shine is coming out of your command zone, starting the game with access to him every single time, and... Uh, acting as a general build around, this is going to open up a whole new strategy archetype in EDH, and that alone makes this card awesome. Demanding Dragon is 5 CMC, 3 colorless red red for a 5 5 dragon with flying. When it enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage to target opponent unless that player sacrifices a creature. So I like this thing. It's 5 mana for a 5 5 with flying. Already decent. And then it's either a Lava Axe or an Edict Effect stapled onto it. That's just straight value. I like this guy a lot. Dragon's Horde is three colorless mana for an artifact. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, put a gold counter on Dragon's Horde. Tap it, remove a gold counter from it, and draw a card. Or you can tap it to add one mana of any color. So this is strictly a better mana lift. It's is mana ramp, it's color fixing, and uh, if you are playing dragons, maybe in Dragon Tribal, uh, this becomes a card draw engine on top of everything else. This is all upside on this mana rock. Amazing in Ur Dragon or Scion on the Ur Dragon EDH. Enigma Drake is being reprinted. It's three CFC, one color is blue red for a star four Drake with flying. Enigma Drake's power is equal to the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard. So, classic card from Amonkhet will now survive rotation. Uh, just really great uh, body to put on the board in Spells Matter decks. I particularly like this card because of how it will interact with the Is It Guild cards with the com coming Ravnica block. Hero Mancer's Cage is 4 CMC, 3 colorless, and a white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Hero Mancer's Cage leaves the battlefield. So we have an Oblivion Ring that costs plus one uh, mana. It's not great. It's worse than Cast Down. It's worse than Ixalan's Binding. It won't see constructive play, period. That said... It's decent and limited. I mean, unconditional removal for any non-land permanent. You'll be happy to pick these up. Heroic Reinforcements is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, red-white for a sorcery. Create 2 one, 1 white soldier creature tokens. Till end of turn, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1, and gain haste. So it's an anthem and uh, raise the alarm stapled together. It's a decent card. Uh, it's fine for limited. I also like how they're basically previewing the guilds before the Ravnica block starts. It's very flavor flavorful, and it's great game design for shadowing what mechanics are about to come. Poison Tip Archer is 4 CMC, 2 colors, black green for a 2-3 Elf Archer with Reach, Death Touch, and whenever another creature dies, an opponent loses, or each opponent loses one life. So we've got sort of a Zulaport Cutthroat. He costs more, but he's also significantly bigger. Uh, the 2-3 body for 4 doesn't feel good, but having Reach and Death Touch is a little bit better, and getting that trigger so that uh, you can drain opponents each time another creature dies is pretty powerful. So 
we're seeing sort of a sacrifice matters theme in Rakdos, but obviously you could fuel it a lot more with saprolings and green creature tokens in green, really making me feel like this is going to wind up being a Jund aristocrat strategy in standard. Regal Bloodlord is 5 CMC, 3 colorless, white, black for a 2 4 vampire soldier with flying. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, create a 1 1 black creature token with flying. So this guy seems decent. Uh, just in a life gain deck, allowing you to further populate your board, getting additional value. Skyrider Patrol is 4 CMC, 2 colors, green blue for a 2 3 elf scout with flying. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay a green or blue. When you do, put a plus one plus one counter on target, another target creature you control, and that creature gains flying until end of turn. So I like this guy. He is a two three flyer, not a huge body for four, but he allows you to jump uh, your other creatures and give them a permanent plus one plus one counter, which is going to play very well with Simic in the upcoming block. Overall, jumping creatures is an extremely powerful effect, and being able to grow them while you do it is also really good and limited. This guy is going to be something to keep an eye out for. The Onan Vanguard is one white mana for a 1-1 one, one cat soldier at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control three or more creatures, Leonin Vanguard gets plus one plus one until end of turn, and you gain one life. And I dub the Mild Nactyl. Now, this thing's great. It's uh, straight up value. You get a 1-1 one, one for one that can be a 2-2 two, two for one, and it gains you life every single turn if you have a go-wide strategy going, uh, which is more incremental life gain for your Johnny Pride mates. Very synergistic. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to attack in order for you to gain the benefits, so it's a safe trigger. Overall, just a solid card. Leonin War Leader is 4 CMC, 2 colors white white for a 4 4 cat soldier. Whenever it attacks, you create two 1 1 white cat creature tokens with lifelink that are tapped and attacking. Wow, I really like this guy. There's a lot to unpack here, but. He is just straight up value. I mean, we're talking about four mana for a four four with relevant creature types. Then on top of that, whenever he attacks, you generate another two power and toughness on the board with lifelink. Awesome. You can go wide with him, and he synergizes with both cat uh, strategy, vampire strategy, life gain strategy. I mean, he's so versatile. He's like a hero of blade hold for cat tribal just so good isolate is one white mana for an instant exile target permanent with converted mana cost of one so i don't see this getting a lot of play in say standard or limited this is actually more of a silver bullet for modern uh sideboard this in or even main deck it in the, some strategies as a screw you very much to uh, Aether Vial and Death Shadow, among other things. Rise from the Grave is being reprinted. It's 5 CMC, 4 colors in black for a sorcery. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature get, is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So we're seeing a lot of reanimate right now. And this is just a classic reanimate card. Not super cheap, but it does allow you to cheat something into play and uh, synergize with your zombie tribal. Siegebreaker Giant is 5 CMC, 3 colorless, red red for a 6-3 giant warrior with trample. You can pay 3 colorless and red, target creature can't block this turn. Great way to push through damage. Not only does he have trample on a 6-3 body, but if you could pay to put him in play, then you could pay to activate his ability, eliminating blockers so that you could just continue raining down damage via trample very solid and in limited you won't see any play in constructed but in limited this guy's going to do work for you vigilant bailoth is 5 cmc three colorless green green for a 5 5 beast with vigilance all right 
truth in advertising. <laughs> no, this guy's great. Uh, he's five mana for a five five with upside. That's really solid in limited. Obviously, he won't play see play outside of limited, but I mean, you'll definitely be happy when you see this in your sealed pool. Sigiled Sword of Valoran is three colorless mana for an artifact equipment with an equip cost of three. Equipped creature gets plus two plus oh, has vigilance, and is a knight in addition to its other types. Whenever equipped creature attacks, create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance that's attacking. So this thing's great. I mean, just a, another way for you to continuously populate the board uh, for knight tribal. Suspicious Bookcase is two colorless mana for a 0-4 artifact creature wall with Defender. You can pay three colorless, tap it, target creature can't be blocked this turn. So I like this guy. I particularly like him for the Arcadis, the Strategist EDH deck. Uh, I He's two mana for what will eventually be a 4-4. Four, four. And... Uh, he can make it so that if you have other giant walls that they can't be blocked and just force through damage. Overall, really solid card. Switcheroo is getting a reprint. It's 5 CMC, 4 colorless, and a blue for a sorcery. Exchange control of two target creatures. Kind of a funny pseudo removal spell. Obviously, it's pretty expensive and it is contingent on board state. You have to have something on board. But you are switching your worst creature for your opponent's best creature, which can make for some pretty exciting board swings. Mon Cleanser is 2 CMC, 1 colorless, and white for a 1 4 human cleric. When a cleanser enters the battlefield, choose one. Remove all counters from target creature. It can't have counters put on it as long as Sun Cleanser remains on the battlefield. Or target opponent loses all counters. That player can't get counters as long as Sun Cleanser remains on the battlefield. So I really like this card. Uh, the second mode is particularly relevant, hosing energy and experience counters uh, in EDH. Take that, Marin of the Clan Nell Toth. Uh, those commanders have been getting a lot of push lately with plus one, plus one synergies, it's very claw of progress, uh, Mizzix, the list goes on and on. But in limited, in standard, this is a great hose for a Johnny's Pride Mate. If you never played with a Johnny's Pride Mate before, that thing gets nuts, especially with all the tools that they're providing it. This allows you to not only strip it of its counters, but nerf it so that it cannot gain those counters, making it just a plain bear. Huge, huge... Uh, potential board swing with this card. Great sideboard card, if nothing else. Supreme Phantom is 2 CMC, 1 colorless, and a blue for 1, 3 spirit with flying. Other spirits you control get plus 1, plus 1. Awesome. <laughs> Just awesome. Uh, 2 mana lord for spirit tribal. Just amazing. Fraying Omnipotence is 5 CMC, 3 colorless, black, black for a sorcery. Each player loses half their life, then discards half the cards in their hand, then sacrifices half the creatures they control. Round up each time. And in case you guys didn't get that, I just snapped my fingers because this is so Thanos. <laughs> it's a decent card. I mean, it, uh, it's obviously makes for a big splash when you play it. Depending on when you play it in the game, it might have minimal impact. So it's a little too swingy for most constructed formats. But if you get this out early in, say, Commander, then this could be devastating. Apex of Power is 10 CMC, 7 colorless, red, 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 for a sorcery. Exile the top 7 cards of your library. Till end of turn, you may cast non-land cards, exile this way. If this spell is cast from your hand, add 10 mana of any one color. Okay, so in a set where Omniscience um, is already a thing, it kind of takes the wind out of this card sales. That said, they're not mutually exclusive. You can have Omniscience in play and then cast this for free, netting 10 mana. Or you can 
drop this and uh, potentially get Omniscience off the top of your deck. Either way, it's pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to cheating this in play. This is the dream right here. Wildfire Eternal from Hour of Devastation. We've got exactly one standard meta before he rotates out. Let's make it happen. More realistically, Jin of Wishes is being reprinted. It's 5 CMC, 3 colors, blue blue, for a 4-4 four, four, Jin with flying. It enters the battlefield with 3 wish counters on it. You can pay 2 colors, blue blue, remove a wish counter from Jin of Wishes. Reveal the top card of your library. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. If you don't, exile it. So, this thing's freaking amazing and limited. I mean, you've got an air elemental with card draw and the potential to cheat something huge in play. For the same cost, it's outstanding. Scoop this up in limited every time you see it. Um, it also combos really well with brainstorm type effects like River Augur. Overall, though, I think this thing will be really cool. If you manage to get this with Omniscience or Apex of Power, that's kind of the dream. Speaking of value in the air, we've got Wind Reader Sphinx being reprinted, downshifted to rare. It's 7 CMC, 5 colorless blue blue for a 3 7 Sphinx with flying. Whenever a creature with flying attacks, you may draw a card. It's both your opponent's creatures and yours, making it a great card draw engine. They don't even have to connect. So overall, that's potentially extremely powerful in the right deck. That's it for today. If you enjoy our content, click that subscribe button so you get access to all our latest videos. If you're looking to support the channel, check out our Amazon affiliate link in the description below. This has been Metagame Mastery. Peace!